We're in the city of Solvain at the Elberhoy Museum of History and Art. I'm here with Esther. How you doing? Welcome. Welcome to Elberhoy Museum. So, first of all, this door, I have to tell you, is awesome. <laughs> it is, isn't it? There's no door handle and, and there's a sign out there that says, pull this string and it opens. I want to see what the back side of it looks like. Is there a story behind this door? There's definitely a story behind that door. It goes to a lot of the story of the museum here. Isn't the ironwork awesome too? Some of my favorite there. That is so cool. Oh Designed my by the artist whose residence you're now in. Our museum is a former residence built by two artists. They were enamored with the story of Elverhoit. It was the first Danish national play and their front door depicts a scene from that story. And open it back up here. Yeah, you got to check this out. So first of all, we've got the very cool system with the latch string that you were using to get in. Uh huh. In fact, later when we lock up, guess how we lock up? Uh, you pull pull this back, right? You got Boom. it. Boom! We're Nobody locked the for the night. Nice. So welcome. So we're standing in. You said this was a resident, now a museum. Yes, huh? correct. This is a uh, former home of two artists, Vigo and Martha Brandt Erickson, built their home very lovingly over a period of about four years using truly authentic old world construction, um, replicating kind of a 18th century Danish manor farm home. Everything from the half timber construction on the exterior is authentic. If you look up at the beams here on the ceiling, they're all hand notched. Oh, I feel tall. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. How did it end up becoming a museum? A very generous gift of the family, and all this looks like a really old home. It was built between 1949 and about 1953, so the construction style is similar to that of a home built in the 1800s in Denmark, but it was actually built in the 20th century. Um, before the passing of um, Martha Brant Erickson, the wife and the couple, she made a very generous provision that her home would become a community museum after her passing and that it would focus on the history and culture of the area and also be a gathering place for artists as it had been throughout the time that the family occupied the home. This was the family kitchen here. And of course, when the family occupied the residence, it was uh, set up with a modern appliances and island and all, but that was their kitchen table. And all the walls were painted in this style, done by Martha Brandt Erickson, where her family gathered and uh, ate here on a daily basis. And those have all been preserved in their original condition here in the museum, which is now outfitted with things like an old Danish antique stove. Sure. A peat burning stove here. So, very clever. The heat's down there. The rings are adaptable. You can take out the rings to adjust the, the size of the opening, and it allows the, in this case, water to be closer to the heat source. Oh so my some goodness. of that ingenuity there on, on display. I'm assuming we're not, you don't encourage the guests to open these up, right? Generally not, but I'll show you what the guests all open in spite of the fact that they aren't really encouraged. <laughs> you wanna see? Wait, I, if you're okay to show it, yeah. Sure. All right, I'm following you. This is kind of our little hobbit cupboard. Oh. It's not exciting what's in there, but it's more about the shape of the cupboard, cupboard yeah. here. So, well, um, just out of fairness of the guests, I don't see a sign that says do not open it. That's right. Touch. Yeah. So, but <laughs> if you may open it. by the time you see this. Yeah. But when you open that, it's full of cleaning supplies, which means you have to get to work. Oh, then yeah. I'm not, not going opening to. it. Oh, well, well, all right. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead. oh yeah. there we go. <laughs> so, Solvang's story is fairly um, unique. It was a, a community that was founded by Danes, for Danes, but the Danes that came to Solvang didn't come, most of them didn't come directly to Solvang in the early years. Long way. You know, a trek across the Atlantic Ocean, a horse and wagon from the closest depot for the train depot, and here at Solvang. So, this room is set up to depict the typical rural environment that um, the immigrant um, came from in Denmark. They came from farm families where they typically had large numbers of children, 10 to 14 kids were not uncommon. Wow. They worked the farm. The oldest son inherited the farm. So you can see that there wasn't a lot of opportunity for some of the younger members of the family. What is in this little hallway area? We're just kind of taking a walk through and looking at some of the tools and materials that were used in the construction of this building. As oh. I said, all hand done, old world style. The actual original building didn't have any nails. It was all put together mortise and tenon, old world style techniques. What is this right here? 
Well, this is a lot about what Solvang is about. So this community was founded by Danes for Danes with the intent of educating young adults um, holding on, while also holding on to their uh, cultural traditions, the, the traditions of Denmark. So a lot of core subjects were taught, but also focused on things like gymnastics, mm -hmm. um, folk dancing. Juggling. Yeah, right. oh, those are weights on some of those, but some of those look like you could probably juggle with them. The college was very much the gathering place of the community and a very important in the town's early years. And I think what a lot of people don't know is that when they see downtown Solvang with all of its architecture and the um, culture on display that you see today, that's not really what the town looked like in its early years. The culture was an inward thing. It was very much a part of town. Pretty much everybody was Danish, but the downtown area did not look Danish at all. That didn't happen until after World War II. So the early years, the town supported the growing population and was more kind of almost Western, if anything. So when did Solvang, I mean, when did it start? Started in 1911. So okay. three educators came here to the West Coast. They were Danes living in the Midwest and they were looking for a place to found a new colony for Danes. And like I said, that school was gonna be the center of the colony and they bought about 9,000 acres, um, an old Mexican land grant, and uh, set about enticing people to come here. What are we looking at right here, Esther? Well, this is called bobbin lace, and there's some very intricate work in here. You get a peek of some of that. I think what's fun about this is it's a long-time Danish tradition, and, and you've probably seen lace in many different applications, but the way it's made by hand is fascinating. And often we have a volunteer who demonstrates the bobbin lace making. So come on a weekend, and chances are you'll get to see some living history and even be able to try your hand at uh, making uh, lace. craft. Come on out, Joel. We're going to check out the diorama cottage. Buildings that you're looking at here in the display, the majority of those buildings are still present in downtown Solvang. They don't have that same look. They've transformed to the Danish style. Mm -hmm. So that's a kind of interesting story because you're helping continue that story. It started in 1947 with the Saturday Evening Post. It was the number one magazine in the US at that time, weekly magazine. They did a big feature story showing Solvang the previous Danish days with lots of photos, you know, Danish costumes, dancing, and then food cooked in the streets. And people started coming to Solvang looking for that Danish culture that they'd seen in the Saturday Evening Post. So the businessmen kind of internally put pressure on each other that any new construction would be in a Danish style and that the old buildings slowly were transformed to a Danish look. Sure. And so, the downtown that you are now familiar with is something that evolved over the years and of course is now all of what downtown has that Danish uh, provincial wow. look to it. Wow. So now if you want to come out and check it out, you know where to go. Where are you located in reference to Solvay? Where are we? What's We're a little bit off the beaten path. We're yeah. on Elverhoy Way, but that's about two blocks south of the village center. Because it's a former residence, we're a little bit down into the residential area. So take that extra block, two blocks from the windmill and you'll find us in our Danish, um, in our Danish home here. Thank you so much. We're gonna go try Joel. some of the Danish cuisine. <laughs> Excellent.